Tomorrow, the country turns out to vote. Despite the lacklustre campaign and a choice between major parties, whose pitch is that the other mob is slightly worse than us, I've got to tell you, we should be grateful for our democracy. Tomorrow, we get to cast our ballot in a mostly peaceful and civil manner. And that's not the case in many parts of the world, where governments are not allies, but rather enemies of the people. Now, in these places, which I've got to point out, are mostly run by socialist or communist tyrants, government policies end up enriching the few and they destroy the lives of the many. Now, that's the reverse of what socialism promises, but it's what it always delivers. If you doubt that, let's have a peek at the latest basket case country created as a result of socialist policies, Sri Lanka. This is what Rani Wick Remesinghe, the new Prime Minister of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, had to say. The next couple of months will be the most difficult ones of our lives. I have no desire to hide the truth and to lie to the public. Although these facts are unpleasant and terrifying, this is the true situation. Government revenue, 1.6 trillion. Expenditure, 2.4 trillion. The budget deficit, 2.4 trillion. 13% of GDP. The foreign reserves, well, they were at 7.5 billion US dollars in November of 2019. However, today it's a challenge for the Treasury to find 1 million US dollars. Fuel stocks, <laughs> in order to ease the queues, we need approximately $75 million. We only have petrol stocks for a single day. Electricity, well, as a quarter of electricity is generated through oil, there's a possibility that power outages will increase to 15 hours a day. Gas, we urgently require $20 million to provide gas to consumers. And there are severe shortages of medicine and surgical equipment. Payments amounting to $34 billion is due for four months for, to supplies of medicine, medical equipment and food for patients. That's a brutally honest new Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Luckily, the Sri Lankans accepted the Belt and Road Initiative from the Chinese Communist Party. And it may be that the Communists will now call that debt in and repossess the entire country as payment. I say that only half in jest and remind you that the Andrews government in Victoria wanted to enter into their own Belt and Road Initiative as well. I could say it's much the same in a country like Venezuela, a previously prosperous nation now on its knees thanks to the introduction of socialism and the policies of a chap named Hugo Chavez. Chavez is dead, but his legacy of, quote, new socialism for the 21st century still rules from the grave. Alarmingly, this man was invited by a bunch of notable Australian leftists, including ABC presenter Philip Adams, former Democrat Senator Natasha Stott Despoja, some Green senators, a bunch of union officials and other propagandists to visit this country. In a fawning letter from 2007, the signatories wrote, and I quote, what Venezuela has been able to achieve in so little time will be a source of inspiration and ideas for many in Australia, end quote. Well, they're right if you actually want to destroy this nation. Venezuela has the world's largest proven fuel reserves in the world, and yet it has food shortages, it's got a healthcare system that's collapsed, a monthly inflation rate of over 2,000%, and a currency whose printed notes are cheaper to use as toilet paper than the real thing. This is all a result of socialism in action. It turns hope and opportunity into despair and poverty. It destroys the good while building the bad. And yet, alarmingly, we see more people in the prosperous West demanding a new version of it. I should remind you that Anthony Albanese is part of the socialist left faction of Labor. And I have to say, he looks set to be our next prime minister. Now, that does not mean we're going to end up like Sri Lanka or Venezuela. But I'm here to tell you, we simply cannot afford more centralized power, less personal autonomy, and greater government involvement in our lives. And that's why I'm so disappointed by this election campaign. Frankly, neither major party have made the pitch that less of them delivers more for us. Instead, it's more borrowed money chasing rented votes amid claims the other mob would be much, much worse than we're going to be. And in truth, I think both the major parties have done a poor job. The debt levels in this country are unprecedented. We are weak militarily. We've got food shortages, empty supermarket shelves, the rationing of toilet paper, for goodness sake, we had last year. Inflation is high and rising. 
housing is unaffordable for many, the cost of living is almost out of control, and still, governments tell us we're apparently the lucky ones. Well, I will admit we are all fortunate to be of this land, but it's rapidly becoming a different nation from the one we used to know. And whomever wins tomorrow, it looks set for even more radical change. Although they don't want you to know it, both major parties are lined up to back the World Health Organization Pandemic Response Treaty. Now, this basically gives an unelected World Health or WHO, WHO bureaucrat the power in the event of a health emergency, which I point out they get to declare, well, it gives them the power to ride roughshod over nations not complying with WHO directives. It's a global version of the European Union where elected MPs, they have no power to override the bureaucratic powers of decree. Welcome to the next step in global governance. And unfortunately, both our major parties are ready to surrender. Well, I'm not ready to surrender myself, and I don't think you should be either. It's why I will be supporting freedom with my vote tomorrow. And that decision won't change who forms government, but it can help to shape the state of the Senate. And frankly, that's our last best hope. A Senate crossbench of freedom lovers can help save us from the major party globalist agenda. It can help to protect free speech, personal autonomy, and our national sovereignty. It can work for us against the creep of modern day socialism that's already created a welfare state and seemingly incentivized the expectations of handouts and dependency. Now remember the people of Venezuela and Sri Lanka they believed all the soothsaying of their governments as they promised recovery was just always around the corner. We're being fed the same lines by our mob, all while things getting steadily worse.